Hello guys, Hypeune here back with another item review. Today we are taking a look at... The Doku no Ken. What? The item's ancient! Well, Dega has secretly buffed this item in the coolest way possible. We're familiar with shadow nerfs, right? Like that one time a few years ago in the Ice Cave event where Ogma was dropping from the event chest. The drop rates were really high for the first two hours. And then something happened to the drop rates afterwards. Yeah. But a shadow buff? Just, it just sounds weird to say. Shadow buff. Anyways, this item got a cool change. A very unique one. What the Dokuno Ken originally did was shoot wavy shots that have increased range. A very nice option to deal moderately high damage from afar. A lot of people say this katana was better than the tier 12 katana as it dealt higher DPS up until 40 defense and it gave increased range on top of that. People liked the wavy pattern too as it made it easier to hit apparently. I'm saying apparently because I don't feel it to be honest. It doesn't make it harder to hit, but I personally don't see how it makes it easier to hit. It's just wavy shots like, I don't know man, it's just, it's just you know, preference thing I guess. The buff isn't really altering the base of this item. It still shoots the exact same way it did before. Same damage output, same wavy shots, but they added something on top of that. On shoot, release a poison burst which deals a total of 1000 damage. This has a 3 second cooldown, so you release a poison burst every 3 seconds. What is this poison burst? It's like an assassin's poison, an explosion which deals damage over time. The thing is, you do a poison burst instead of a poison throw, so there's no air time unlike the assassin's poison. You instantly emit a poison burst on yourself. How flippin' awesome! This is a straightforward buff to the weapon. No special catches. It's not like, you know, most weapons where they get increased damage by the cost of having less range. No, nothing like that. They literally slapped a tier 7 poison onto the doku, and it costs no mana to use. What? This is what a ninja with a doku looks like right now. You're packing a free tier 7 poison on you, and at no cost, with a 6 tile radius, you throw it. So yeah, the burst has a 6 tile radius. That's a little bit above the katana's range itself. That means if you're hitting with your slashes, you're also poisoning the enemy too, no matter what. You don't have to go extra close or anything. The utility this provides is hectic. I mean... They somehow made a piercing weapon pierce even more. The first thing that comes to mind for me with this buff is... They keep doing my man assassin wrong. First we got the fungal spell which is a direct upgrade to the Nidarian poison. And now we got this? Literally robbing the assassin's poison and giving it to a ninja. You know what's cool? You can completely miss your shot and still kill that guy behind you. <laughs> So you know this Doku's buff is super cool and it's very fun. But what about the practicality of this buff? How much bonus DPS does this actually give? Well, that's pretty simple. So the poison deals 1000 damage over 6 seconds and it deploys every 3 seconds, which means you get 2 poisons every 6 seconds. With a bit of mathematronics, that means the poisons give an additional 333.33. 3 3 3 recurring dot d p s that's a solid boost given the fact that the katana has 2300 dps to start with which you can see holds up well against the tier 12 masamune at 333 dps and it shoots right up in fact it even beats the sadamune the tier 13 katana you know what it's almost the same strength as the tier 14 katana wow what an upgrade, from a mid tier weapon to something that's almost end game. You'll have to keep in mind the poison doesn't get buffs like normal shots do, but even then it still holds up. It still beats the Sadamune under a damaging and berserk buff. Of course the tier 14 katana is still better, but hey, that item drops from the hardest dungeon in the game. And guess what, the doku still has a little bit more range. So that confirms it, this katana, not only is it cool, it is now clearly a powerful weapon too. In my books, it went from a C plus to an A minus. That's pretty spicy. I'm having a blast using this weapon and that reminds me, this buff applies to the fire blade too. This is just a reskin on Doku which you can get from Melogia, the red alien dungeon. Inside this dungeon lives the thickest being in the universe, the booty cheeks alien. Damn boy, he thick! You know, I just realized the katana sprite has changed a little bit too. It has a nice shine to it now. Nice. 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 Nice! 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 So, I've been rocking this new set lately. 
Don't laugh. So we got the poisonous Doku spawning area of effect bombs, a whole mess of pizza slices from the pizza star, and finally we got a little minion that zaps enemies whenever I take more than 50 damage, which is why I call it Sploosh. There's a lot going on, and why am I using the Harley? It gives 80 mana, which means even more pizza slices to spam. If I want to hit something further away, I can make things even more splooshy with the Hanagasaku. I hope I pronounced that right. This star chucks a flower at the enemy, and at the same time plants a bud that explodes after. Very sploosh. I've been having heaps of fun with this set. I just find it cool that the enemies are bleeding whenever I shoot, and like 50 things are going on at once. This set's also completely viable. The buff to the Doku is a solid one, practicality and fun wise. I hope to keep it up with these cool changes in the future. I mean like, check out the damage here. stunned what you see it does the damage this set has surprisingly good synergy if you think about it the doku and the burst have about six range which is almost the same range the cranium has to zap its enemies the haliyama provides a mana and it also has relatively low defense meaning you'll take more damage per hit which is useful in this case as we need to take 50 damage to activate the cranium it all ties together pretty well. Another thing, about the poison burst. It activates on shoot, which means it works with your star. If you throw it, it also activates the poison burst. It's a pretty weird thing, but I, th I think it's a bug. Anyways, like I said, I hope they make cool changes to weapons like this in the future. I'm looking at you, Ray Katana. You know how bad this item is? Even if you double the number of shots it fires, it still does less damage than the enforcer. If I were to buff it, I'd do something new, like hold click to charge and release for a strong beam. Fiddle with the numbers around that, you know, something like that. I would like to mention one downside though. We play with a little bit of lag, so the poison won't spawn exactly on top of you. There's a little delay. This is completely fine when kiting enemies as it'll definitely hit them, but when rushing towards an enemy, your poison will fall behind. From playing around with this for a while, I wouldn't say this hurts the weapon too much, but it is definitely a downside. Before we finish, I'd like to announce that I have made a second realm channel. Introducing... Maliwan. Yeah, that's another Borderlands reference. This second channel will have other content that I don't normally post on the Hyperion channel, such as guides, showcases, boss fights, and also a series a lot of people have been asking me to do, which is to do 100 of a certain dungeon and see what I get. For example, loot from 100 lost halls. But most importantly, I'll be posting challenges, which you guys can participate in. I just uploaded a Toxic Sewer speedrun. If you beat this speedrun within 7 days of the upload, I'll give you 1000 realm gold. That's right. One thousand realm gold. The premium stuff. More details on the video, link in description. Thank you guys for watching.